Does the moon actually make people act crazy or change human behavior in any way? This is a question which is banging my head since long time. And I thought most of us have the same question, hence made this video to put the scientific facts and truths in front of you. So let's begin. If we look at the history from the ancient times, many philosophers believed that lunar cycles impact behavior of living beings on earth and causes physiological changes as well. There are many versions and theories developed around it in the past 2000 years, but only few of them have survived. Now, I would like to play a video for your reference with Sadhguru Jaggi Vasudev explaining about lunar theory. If you look at this planet as a body, this water body that we call as ocean is covering over seventy percent of the land or the area. Similarly, if you look at this body, even here, over seventy percent is water. Not by accident, that's the design <laughs> So if the very oceans are rising, you think the water in your body is not rising? This theory is not only supported by people like Sadhguru, but also some of the researchers continue to hold up this theory because Tides in the oceans are caused by moon's gravitational force and humans are mostly made up of water. Let's look at the flaws in the lunar theories one by one. Flaw number one, lunar theories fail to take into account the differences in gravitational forces. Gravitational force is the force of attraction between any two bodies in the universe. If we calculate this force between earth and moon, it comes around 1 crore trillion newtons, whereas the gravitational force between human and moon is 0.002 newtons, which is very, very, very negligible. Researchers like Professor Ivan Kelly claim that a mother holding a child will exert 12 million times more force than the moon. Similarly, an astronomer Judge Obel claims that a mosquito would exert more gravitational pull on your hand than the moon would do. These facts clearly state that the moon's gravitational force is negligible. Flaw number two, open systems versus closed systems. The moon's gravitational force affects only open bodies of water such as oceans and lakes, but the water in the human body is contained in the tissues, blood, bones, fluid compartments which are confined by a physical boundary. Therefore, moon's gravitational force could not affect the water in the human body. Flaw number three, percentage of water content in the human body. Lunar theories often claim that humans contain 70% of the water which is equivalent to the percentage of the water on the earth by area. But if you look at the scientific data, an average adult male contains approximately 60% of the water by weight whereas female contains only 50% of the water. The percentage of the water in the body varies based on number of factors like age, health, water intake, weight and sex. For example, if we take a newly born infant, the percentage of the water in the body can go as much as 93% of the body weight whereas fatty people contain as little as 15% water. Hence, the claim of 70% of the water in the human body is not valid and which is not equivalent to the 70% of the water on the earth by area. These three physical laws prove that lunar theories proposed are not valid scientifically. Let's understand why many people believe in these lunar myths. What is the psychic behind it? First one is misconception. Many people seem to think that since the moon causes the ocean tides, it must be so powerful that it can affect the human body as well. Point number two. People might have heard lunar theories repeatedly many times by gurus, religion heads and other people like doctors, social workers who got influenced by these theories. In addition, lunar theories are often told with a significant amount of communal reinforcement. All these factors over the time strengthens one's belief to favor the lunar mythologies. For example, if one believes that more accidents will happen during a full moon day, then one will notice only the accidents happening during a full moon day and he will omit the accidents which are happening on other days. Similarly, if something strange happens on a full moon day, a casual connection will be assumed. Let's look at the other claims in the lunar theories. One study concluded that moons increase the incidence of car accidents in United States. This study was concluded ignoring the fact that nearly all the moon 
full moon nights used for the data had occurred on the weekends. Car accidents are more likely to happen on weekends because of more genders and increased consumption of alcohol over the weekend. Researchers like Ivan Kelly, James Roten, Roger Culver have conducted their own lunar phase studies in 1991 and have extensively reviewed more than 100 analyses which are in favor of lunar cycle. They found no correlation between the human behavior and lunar phases and the full moon. And they found much of the research had been poorly conducted and ignored obvious variables. They also looked at the things like murder rates, suicides, birth and death rates, admission to mental hospitals, emergency calls, general disasters, fluctuations in the mood, incidents of major trauma, behavioral outbursts, and even reviewed fights at hockey games and found no correlation. For the people who want to investigate more details about these false propositions, the links are given in the description of the video, you can go through it. Finally, don't believe in the irrational theories proposed by gurus and religion heads and even people like Sadhguru who goes a step ahead to make lunar mythology as science without any scientific basis to it. I would like to end this video with a saying, assume nothing and question everything. I will bring another interesting topic next week, till then, bye bye.